Hey everybody, I'm Logan Burchett, co-founder, chief operating officer at Forecaster, and today I wanna to talk about the differences in funding stages, specifically pre-seed versus seed versus series A. What are the major differences in these three funding stages? Where do you need to be at each of these three funding stages and what are the uses of capital traditionally within these three funding stages? Before I get into the content, if you could please do me a favor and like this video and subscribe to the channel, it really helps our visibility. It really helps us reach more founders and help them unlock the power of finance and financial modeling. And if you've never heard of Forecaster, I encourage you to check us out, www.forecaster.co, and speak to a member of our team for all of your forecasting and finance needs. Now, with that being said, I wanna dive right into the content. So when we're looking at the three earliest stages of fundraising, the pre-seed round, the seed round and the series A round. It's good to kind of break them down and analyze them each individually and sequentially to understand which round do you really fit in and what do you need to look like with each of these rounds of funding and what do you need to pr prepare for when raising each of these rounds of funding. So let's dive into each of these three rounds. So the pre-seed round is going to be the earliest of the three rounds. And whenever you're analyzing a pre-seed round, this is usually to start getting something together to prove the concept of your business. So a lot of times people will raise a pre-seed round and they will use the funds of that round to get some sort of a product to market to start trying to generate some level of revenue to try to show that there is a future in their business. So pre-seed rounds traditionally are raised on instruments like convertible notes or safe agreements. Uh, instead of priced equity rounds. So what that means is instead of actually raising into an instrument that forces you to value the company and essentially sell a percentage of the company, which is traditionally done in a priced equity round, pre-seed deals are usually done using convertible note, which is a form of debt that will convert into equity later, or a safe, which is essentially a promise of future equity that will convert at a valuation of a future date. The reason for that is that you want to, in these early stages, uh, shy away from setting a valuation for the company, or traditionally most people opt to shy away from trying to set a valuation for the company because it's so early and it's so nebulous and there's so little traction that it's very difficult to have anything to negotiate with whenever it comes to setting a valuation. A lot of times you'll have some sort of a proxy for valuations like valuation caps that are baked into the instrument that you raise in, which basically says the valuation will not exceed a certain amount so that investors are protected in the event that you don't go off and raise uh, that next round of funding or you grow quite a lot and then your valuation is very, very high so they're not rewarded for being early investors. Now, pre-seed rounds can range uh, as with any round of funding in terms of size. Traditionally, you see pre-seed rounds around that $500,000 to a million dollar mark and I'm speaking in 2023 terms, so if you're watching this video in 2024 or 2025, that can very much change. But traditionally today, that's roughly the round size that you tend to see whenever you're talking to people that are raising pre-seed rounds. The use of funds for these types of rounds are usually, as I said before, to start building and start getting some very early traction. So. If you're an idea stage company and you're looking to build software, a lot of people will use the funding from these rounds to start building out an MVP and start getting early traction, start iterating, making the product better, trying to get some sort of traction with this funding. I recommend whenever you're raising a pre-seed round to budget for 18 to 24 months worth of runway, assuming very little or no revenue, just to give you plenty of time to build out the product, show that you have something that people are actually interested in. So that's traditionally how pre-seed rounds work. Once you get to a seed round of funding, traditionally you really wanna start seeing some sort of early traction. Usually if you're raising a seed round, you wanna see some sort of traction, be that revenue or downloads or whatever it is for your business that's showing that people are actually interested in what you've built using the funds from the pre-seed round. That's what you wanna to point to whenever you're raising your seed round. So just to give you a data point, at Forecaster, whenever we raised our seed round of funding, we had about $10,000 a monthly reoccurring revenue. That's not a ton of revenue, but it was just enough to show 
people are actually paying for this thing that we've built there are people that are interested and essentially what you really want to do is you want to prove that you can raise more money to continue to invest in this thing that's got people's early attention and really build it into something special. Seed rounds can vary a lot of times. Seed rounds will be done similarly to pre-seed on convertible notes or safes, but a lot of times they are done as priced equity rounds, which forces you to put a valuation on the company. As a data point, Forecaster raised our seed round at a priced equity round. So it allowed all the people that, that invested in the pre-seed to convert and get equity into the company but it's kind of all over the place I would say predominantly most of them are done as priced equity rounds again you want to show some level of traction and the pitch there is we've got some traction we're seeing some great things we want to continue to invest continue to grow and usually the pitch for raising the seed round is to start building a scalable growth engine that you can then go and scale once you raise a series a so get that money machine essentially proven out so that you can then go and dump money into it to really grow exponentially which leads me into the series a series a is of the three the latest round of funding and that's almost always done as a priced equity round where you're essentially setting a valuation for the company, investors are investing in the company. By this time, by the time you're raising a Series A, you really need to show very strong, not only traction, but unit economics, because the pitch traditionally of the Series A is, we've got product market fit, we've got good unit economics, people are really liking what we're doing, now it's time to pour gas on the proverbial fire. It's time to raise millions of dollars and dump a lot of money into customer acquisition to really grow very, very rapidly. At that point, you shouldn't be still trying to figure out your model, you shouldn't be trying to figure out your unit economics, you should be ready to grow and grow very, very quickly. So the Series A is kind of the first round of funding, I would say, that is really meant to grow as quickly as you possibly can. In the pre-seed and the seed round, you're still kind of in figure it out mode to a certain degree. At the pre-seed, you're just very early building out some sort of a prototype, something that you can get some sort of traction on. At the seed round, you've got that built and you're really trying to prove out that scalable unit economics, that model that you can scale on. By the time you get to the Series A, it's time to scale. It's time to put all of that money you've raised, dump it into the company, and just try to grow as quickly as you can. Hopefully you found that helpful. Those are the differences between the three earliest fundraising rounds, the pre-seed, the seed, and the Series A round. Again, if you found any value in this video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. It really helps us grow, and hopefully this was helpful.